defeated and are a sign, somebody say sign, of the coming revival among young people and one billion soul harvest that prophet Bob Jones saw was coming. First though, for Father's Day, I want to start by just spending a minute talking about the Father heart of God. The Father heart of God. In Psalm 68 and verse 5, the Bible declares of God's character and of His nature, a father of the fathers and a judge of the widows is God in His holy habitation. You see, we have those here among us this morning who never knew their biological father. Imagine. We have others among us this morning, like myself, who at the age of 10, my mom and dad divorced, and for the rest of my life, I can count on one hand the times I saw my father after that. That's sad. Yeah, it is. Some of us had dads that weren't the best dads. Maybe they had anger issues or were violent. So this is for pretty decent dads. All dads are flawed. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. No dads are perfect. Except for one. God, our Father. Amen. God, our Father. And if you're here this morning and you were fatherless and you never had a father, you may have never even known your father, God is a father of the fathers. Yeah. He's also a defender of the widow. Amen. A judge of the widows. A judge means to defend, to protect, Amen. to provide for. He watches over the, the widow whose husband has died and who has no children and is all alone. Now, kids, if your mom's a widow, the Bible says you're supposed to take care of. Her. That's right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> In fact, my wife informed me this week that her mom's moving in with us. Hallelujah. I'm teasing. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. She's a wonderful woman. And uh, we want to we want to be a blessing to her. Amen. She's in a stage in life, battling some health issues. Uh, Got fired from her job. So she's got no job, battling potentially serious health issues. And so we're going to help her. Amen? Amen. Amen. God's going to help her. And God's going to help her. But God works through people too. Can I get an amen? Amen. We will be that blessing of God. Amen? Now, hallelujah. For God's a father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows. That's who God is. As he reigns from his holy habitation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another Psalm 27 and verse 10 says this. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Yeah. Hallelujah. There are people that their father and their mother forsake them. But God is the father of the fathers. Though your father and your mother forsake you, the Lord will take you up. He will take you into his arms. He will take you into his family. He will take care of you. He will make a way. Yes. Don't be bitter. Be better. Oh, that's By giving your life to Christ. Yes. And let him make something beautiful out of the mess. He will take your mess that you grew up in and turn it into your message. Right, you, Amen. Yes. And that's his kids. He has such a heart for us. And I want us this morning to, to try to grasp by the Holy Ghost the concept of God as our Father. It was really Jesus who really brought it to its full f f f f fruition. Thank you. When He came and showed us that God was His Father and our Father. He taught us to pray. He said, here's how you ought to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, 
Hallowed be thy name. Amen. And then pray for him to take care of everything. Thy kingdom come. Your reign yes. come and be done in earth Amen. as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread, my Father. My Father, forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. Amen? Yes. That's why you got to forgive, by the way. Yes. Amen. We're asking God to forgive us to the degree and the extent that we're willing to forgive others. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I need complete forgiveness. Amen. I need total forgiveness. Yes. Yes. So I better give total forgiveness. Yes. Can I get an amen? amen? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Father God, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. He said, God's our Father. Amen. He said after his resurrection, when Mary Magdalene was at the tomb, and she turned and saw a man thinking he was a gardener, and said, please tell me, where have you taken his body so I can go get it? And it was Jesus, of course. He said, Mary. She goes, Rabboni, master, my master. He said, don't cling to me, Mary. For I ascend unto my God and your God. To my Father and to your Father. See, God's our Father. Yes. And as a Father, He loves us. Yes. He takes care of us. He watches over us. Just when we as fathers try to do that, Though imperfect our fatherhood is, God's is perfect. Amen. Amen. Everlasting Father. An everlasting Father. And Romans says it this way. Romans 8 and 15 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Abba. I heard a preacher one time say, I never really fully grasped the meaning of that verse in Romans 8, 15 till I visited Israel. And I was walking down the streets of Jerusalem. And it happened to be nearing sundown on Friday when the Sabbath was about to begin. And there was a Jewish father walking quickly to get to the synagogue before the sun set. After that, violate the Sabbath and to get into the synagogue. And there was this little five or six year old boy running behind him trying to keep up, going, Abba, 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 Abba. Daddy. Oh. And all of a sudden it's on him, Abba. Daddy, Daddy. Papa. The spirit we've received from God, it's a spirit of adoption is as though we were his firstborn. And by that spirit, the Holy Spirit, we cry, Papa. We cry, Daddy. That's more personal than just father, isn't it? Yes. He's my daddy. Amen. I can crawl up on his lap and lay my head on his neck and he puts his arms around me. He's my daddy. He's my daddy. Yeah. He'll dangle me on his knee. Amen? Yeah. He's my daddy. And the passage of love, i got to read the next couple verses. They're just... And the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So when you're born again, you have received the Spirit of God in you. There's a witness inside of you that you're born again. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. You must be born again. Yeah. You can't just go to church and get saved. You can't just read your Bible and get saved. You've got to repent of sin and call the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior, who because He died for your sins and was buried on the third day rose again. And if you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. How do you get saved? He causes you to become born of the Spirit, born again, when you call on His name. Amen? Amen. There are folk in church right now that think they're good people. Well, I'm a church-going good person. Well, the Bible says you're a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And going to church and paying your tithe and giving to the Red Cross and, and, and giving your extra clothes to goodwill will not get you to heaven. For it is not by works, lest any man should boast, but it is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and Christ alone that you can find forgiveness of your sins. 
And if you think you're good, you're on your way to hell. It's only when somebody recognizes that they're lost, that they're a sinner, that they've broken the laws of God, that they've sinned against God, and they've sinned against their fellow man, and they repent in sorrow and in, in, in cry and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, God, please forgive me a sinner. Have mercy on me a sinner. And they beat their breast. And then you look to the only hope, the only Savior, Jesus Christ. And you say, you're the only one who died for my sins. Jesus, save me. Come into my heart. I put my trust and faith in you. Yes. That's the only way you get saved. Amen. And then you go the rest of the life, the rest of your life, that, that you're a former sinner now saved by the grace of God, but it's only by His grace. Yeah. <laughs> you never earned it. You certainly didn't deserve it. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so you walk for the rest of your days humbly before your God. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, you'd be dust. Yeah, that's right. Amen? Amen? That's what it takes to get saved. Amen. And so the Spirit comes into us. And we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. I remember real quickly, our, when our son Weston got born again. Wow, what an amazing testimony. Mm -hmm. He went with us. I was giving my testimony at a church. Church of God Church here in the Metro Phoenix area is a Sunday night service. I've been invited to go up and share my testimony and our little seven-year-old son went with us. And he sat there in the audience I gave my testimony and on the way home we were hungry. So we were going to stop somewhere at some restaurant and get something to eat. And I was just, you know, when, when, when you preach, you get on fire. Amen. Yeah. You just do it's the Word of God and the Spirit of God you just, that drains you. That's why when, when Sunday's over, I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm spent. But, but while you're, you're on fire, and, and, and so we get in the car, and, and, and I'm, it was a truck actually, and my son's in the back seat. Oh my God, my son's not saved. My son's seven years old. I turned around and said, son, Would you like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? To find forgiveness for your sins. Seven years old. They're still born under sin. Right? Yes. Find forgiveness for your sins, son. He goes, yes, Dad. Yes, I would. I said, okay, pray from your heart. Just cry out to Jesus. And I kind of led him in a prayer of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. And we got done. And we said, Amen. He goes, Dad, I feel all funny right in here. <laughs> yeah. I said, Son, that's the Holy Ghost. You've been born again. Hallelujah. That's the Spirit of God coming inside of you, right in your belly, yes. in your innermost being. Yes. We went to the restaurant. He fell asleep, mm -hmm. as seven-year-olds will do. Mm -hmm. We're done. We paid the check. He's laying in the booth out. I pick him up. I, come on, son, we're leaving seven years old. I'm carrying him. He's out. You know, I'm carrying him. We're walking out. He's got his head on my shoulder. I, he wakes up a little bit. I says, son, I'm just so proud of you. We're walking to the car. I'm so proud of you, son, for receiving Jesus Christ today, tonight as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. He goes, Dad, it was almost as though I could hear him. Oh, wow. Yes. Praise God. That's powerful. Amen. That's being born again. And the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Wait a minute. If we're the children of God, it says, then we're heirs. Yes. Heirs of God yes. and joint heirs with Christ. Yes. In other words, God has given everything to His Son, Jesus. And when we become born again, we become part of the family. Yes. And we are joint heirs with His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, because we've been adopted into that family. Right, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Woo! That means everything God has is yours and mine too. Amen. Joint heirs with Christ. It goes on and says, If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen? Yes. Jesus was hated. He was persecuted. He was ridiculed. And all he did was speak the truth. Yes. If you're not somewhat hated and ridiculed and made fun of and mocked and scourged, then you ain't speaking the truth. You're not standing up for Jesus. 
If you're going to stand up for Jesus and for the truth of His Word, Amen? Speaking the truth in love, we're going to love people, Amen? But love tells the truth. Love tells people it ain't okay to be gay. Love tells people evolution is a lie. One kind of anything never changed into another kind of anything. Amen. One kind of plant never changed into another kind of plant. One kind of animal never changed into another kind of animal. Oh, there's all different kinds. They're beautiful. They're awesome. They're amazing. They're one, look at the animals. Look at the plants. One kind never changed into another kind. You can get variations within that kind like we do in the dog kingdom. You can get that, but they're dogs. A dog's a dog. A dog's a dog. Right? It's a lie. We need to start standing up for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Father's Day, we need to stand up and tell man, pornography is wrong, it'll, it'll sewer your soul. It'll steal your joy. It'll rob your peace. It'll put you in bondage. Amen? Yeah. And we could go right on down the line. We need to tell people communism, socialism is ungodly and it's unbiblical. God said, work with your own hands to provide for yourself. Amen? And that gives you freedom. It gives you self-respect. It gives you the ability to, to provide for yourself and your family rather than being a, a slave to the government daddy. Right? We're not dependent. Right? Whatever it is. A young people. A young people. They're all communists. We need revival among our young people. And that's kind of what this message is going to end up getting into. We need revival from the elementary school to the high school to the college and to the university. Amen? Amen. Get these people to stop believing in evolution. Start believing in the Word of God. Amen. God created the heaven and the earth. And the sea and all that in the midst. And he did it 6,000 years ago, not 6 billion. And it's all recorded right here in the Holy Bible. This is the history of the universe. If you don't know what the Bible says, you don't know anything. College professor, Mr. University professor, if you don't know and you don't teach this Bible, then first of all, you don't know anything. Number two, you're teaching a lie. Because anything that's not of the Bible and of Jesus Christ is a lie. Jesus is the truth. Amen. Because God of Christ is a lie. Amen? Right, amen. They need to step out of that position as teacher until they get saved and get right with God and learn the Word of God. Until then, we need Bible-believing Christians in our schools and universities. Amen. Same with you, Mr. Politician. we got to suffer with Christ in order to be glorified with Him. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We'll be mocked. We'll be ridiculed. That's okay. That's okay. He said, when they speak evil of you, for my name's sake, leap for joy. Yeah. Rejoice and leap for joy. But so they also treated the prophets before you. The final verse here, verse 18, says, for I reckon, I guess Paul is a southerner. For I reckon, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present life are worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Woo! Whatever suffering we go through for Christ in this life is nothing. Nothing compared to the glory that's coming. There's a coming glory. When we get our resurrected bodies, we reign with Christ on this earth a thousand years. And then we live and reign with Him for all eternity in the new heaven and the new earth. Well, forget all the suffering. Amen? Father heart of God. The Father heart of God. He, for His children, He cares for us. And I would be so bold as to say that God in His goodness has sent us a president in the person of President Trump who is also a president with a Father's heart. Yes. Think about it. Yes. <clears throat> He's like a father for our nation. Yes. Just as we as fathers... We, we don't want anybody taking advantage of our kids. 
He doesn't want nations taking advantage of our country like they have been for decades. He said, no, that's enough stuff. You're not going to take advantage of us anymore, China or Mexico or Canada. No, you're not going to take advantage of my kids. Uh-uh. Stops right here, right now. Just as the father wants to protect his children from, from the bully down the street. So Trump as a father wants to protect his kids from the bully on the other side of the sea. That's right. Amen. Right? Amen. And he take, he's taking care of it. Just as, as a father wants to see his kids prosper and be blessed and be successful, so Trump as a father is bringing prosperity and success to his children here in America. Yes. Amen. Amen. He's like a father for our nation. Yes. It's a blessing. Yes. It's a blessing. It's of God. It's a God thing. We prayed Him in. Yes. We prayed Him in. Yeah. Because yeah. we as a church are so sick and tired of politicians who did nothing right, only brought destruction to our nation. And I'm, I'm talking about not just Democrats, Republicans too. They were anti-Israel. They were anti-church. They were anti-Christian. Yeah. We got fed up. To God, we need somebody who will do things according to godliness and righteousness and truth. Turn our nation around 180 degrees. We need somebody that's a wrecking ball. We need somebody that's a sledgehammer. Jeb Bush says, I thought I was going to be president until I ran into a buzz saw. Remember Jeb Bush looking over at Trump and saying, you'll never be president of the United States in one of the debates. Well, the early debates. He's right next to him. Oh, low energy Jeff. Yeah. Jeff looks at him and he goes, you'll never be President Donald Trump. Uh, Jeff was one of the first ones to go. <laughs> right? The Bush dynasty couldn't beat him. The Clinton dynasty couldn't beat him. The deep state. Peter Strzok. Oh, he'll, he'll never be President Trump. I wish they quick called them lovebirds. Peter Strzok and what's her name, Paige? They're not lovebirds. They're adulterers. They're both married, cheating on their spouses. That's adultery. A sin will send you to hell. And let's repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and she's like, oh, he'll never be present. Right, right, right. And Peter struck right back. No, he won't because we're going to stop him. <laughs> the Bush dynasty couldn't beat him. The Clinton dynasty couldn't beat him. And the deep state couldn't stop him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Woo. Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Father's Day. I mentioned it was on a Father's Day that God sent revival to the Brownsville Assembly of God Church in Pensacola, Florida on Father's Day. Wow. And I think I know why it was Father's Day. On this Father's Day, Lord, send revival. Let it break out not only in this church here in Peoria, Arizona, but in churches all across America and all around the world. In this year of 2018, starting in this June 17th, Lord, because we need the fathers to get on fire for Jesus, because that's when revival will come, and we need a revival among our young people, so we need to turn the heart of the father back to the children, and the children back to their fathers. And that's exactly what God says will bring revival. In Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, the very last words of the Old Testament, God said, and I will send you a light the prophet yes. before the great and notable day of the Lord comes so that he may turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children back to their fathers yes. and Zacharias in the New Testament and Luke chapter 1 was in his ministry at the temple at the time of prayer and he was in the holy place offering the prayer of incense and his wife Elizabeth had been barren and they had no children and all of a sudden the angel Gabriel appeared on the right side of the altar of incense and he said Zacharias fear not for your prayers have been answered your wife Elizabeth shall conceive and she shall bring forth a son and you're to give him the name John and he will go before the Christ 
the Messiah in the spirit and Gabriel begins to quote the final words of the Old Testament Malachi 4 verses 5 and 6 and says John the Baptist he will go before the Christ in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord We need revival among our fathers Amen. to get revival among our kids or vice versa. Yeah. We need revival among our kids to get revival among our dads. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Well, it's just either way it goes is okay that we just need it so we can turn the hearts of the fathers to God and the hearts of the kids to God and we can get an on fire generation that loves God and serves God and preaches the Bible and gets rid of this evolution nonsense and begins to declare the truth that God creator. Yes. Yeah. Amen. God is our creator. And he came in a human likeness in the form of Jesus Christ. And he's our only savior. And if you don't get saved, you're going to die in your sin. And you're going to be burned alive in hell forever and forever. Oh my God. How come nobody preaches that anymore? It's all about, well let me tell you how you can get blessed. Let me tell you how you can get healed. Let me tell you how your finances can increase. That's fine. We talk, we preach that too. And that's all part of it. Can I get an amen? Yeah. amen. But if a sinner doesn't get saved, he's going to be burned alive. That's right. Amen. That's what breaks my heart. Yes. yes, I want to be blessed. And yes, I want to be healed. But more than that, I want to see the sinner saved. Amen. 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 Revive the Father's Day. So, what does Father's Day, President Trump, and the recent Triple Crown victory by a horse named Justify have to do with one another? And how is all that a sign that revival's coming? Let me tell you a little something about Justify. If you watched the Belmont Stakes last week, the third leg of the Triple Crown, it's Kentucky, Kentucky Derby is the first one, then the Preakness in California, and then the Belmont Stakes in New York, just 15 miles outside Manhattan. Where's President Trump from? New York, right? <laughs> Triple Crown winners are very rare. There's a well, first, let me tell you a little something about Justify. If you watched it, you saw that there's a couple different conglomerates that own Justify. The primary one is called Windstar. Windstar owns 60% of Justify. Guess what? The owner and the CEO of Windstar are both Christians. Yeah. Praise God. You all probably also heard that there's another conglomerate called China Horse Club. And I thought to myself, what are the Chinese doing in this thing? Yeah. China Horse Club, they own 25% of Justify. China Horse Club is owned by a Malaysian billionaire who's also a Christian. The owners of Justify named him according to Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith... We have peace with God yeah. through our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Amen. Justify is a Christian horse. Yeah. <laughs> now, interestingly, though, Romans 5 1 is the past tense. Therefore, being justified, past tense. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But they didn't name him justified, they named him justified. Yeah. Meaning. That he's a sign that something present or future is going to be justified. Mm -hmm. be, shall, shall justify. He said, there, there's a, a justification yet to come. There, there, there's, there's somebody's going to... I, I keep ending up with the past tense. How, how do I make it present and future tense? Yet shall God justify somebody. Yet shall God justify somebody. Right? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Let me tell you a quick little story. Then we're going to watch the race. Okay? Quick little story. When President Trump first started running for President of the United States, as an evangelical, born again, Holy Ghost filled Christian, I'm seeking who are we supposed to pray for? Who are we supposed to vote for in the primary? Yeah, yeah. We had 17, I think it was 16 or 17, I forget. I think it was 17 of the yeah. top most intelligent, brilliant, top notch Republican candidates I had ever seen. Right. They were all great. Mm -hmm. But which one was the best? What was it? Was it Ted Cruz? Was it Marco Rubio? Or was it Ben Carson? Was it. Who was the best? And, and, and of course, they all say they're Christians. Right. <laughs> right? Right. But pretty soon it became evident that this billionaire businessman, playboy, married, divorced three times, billionaire, really smart businessman was starting to knock them off one after another. <laughs> I'm like, huh, what's up with this truck? Right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I come across a prophecy. There's a former firefighter by the name of Mark Taylor. Right. Yeah. Who, back in 2011, now remember 2012 was the midterm election for Barack Hussein, the Muslim Obama. Huh? Yeah. Right? That's right. <laughs> And after four years, I knew he wasn't going to get reelected. Yeah. After all the damage he had done to our nation, I mean, my God, our nation can't be that evil, can't be that bad to put that man back in office. I mean, the very first thing he had done four years earlier when he got elected, one of the very first things he did was take his pen and sign into law that your and my tax dollars would be sent overseas to pay for abortions. Well, the first thing he did. Yeah. And then he fought and fought and he fought until homosexual marriage got yeah. made legal by the ungodly Supreme Court. Appointed ungodly people to the Supreme Court. Yeah. So I thought, my God, there's no way. Well, Mark Taylor was probably thinking the same thing all we Christians were. But it was 2011. He had on his TV, and Donald Trump was on the TV being interviewed. And all of a sudden, God spoke to him and says, You're hearing the voice of a president. <laughs> Years before, Mark Taylor had had an encounter with God, and God told him, I will make you a pen prophet. A prophet who will receive prophecies that you're going to put to pen. You're not going to stand up there and say, Let's say You're going to sit down with pen and paper, and I'm going to feed it to you, and you're going to write it down. So he immediately got up, went to his office, in his home, got his paper and pen out, and God began to flow through him what he calls the Trump prophecy. Right. That Donald Trump was going to become president of the United States. That he was going to reverse and put a stop to the anti-Christ globalist agenda that's trying to make the one world order out of everything. The Bushes were part of it. The Obamas were part of it. They've all been part of it. The Clintons are all part of the one world order trying to usher in the coming kingdom of Antichrist. God said, no. Right. Praise God. I'm putting a stop to it, devil. Devil, you've got a full flush. You've got America by the throat. You, you're, America's done with because you've got a perfect hand. Look what you've done to my nation. And all of a sudden, God goes, wait a minute. I'm going to play my trump card. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now what are you going to do, devil? Yeah. I played the trump card and you can't beat the trump card. <laughs> Praise God. Right? Yeah. So Mark Taylor writes this down. He's Everything that's happening, you have to go back. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you again. It's so amazing. Everything's happening. He said that the nations of the earth have stolen from America for decades. Trump's going to get all that money back sevenfold. Yeah. Yes. Exactly what he's doing, right? Yes. Everything Trump's doing, it, it was foretold back in 2011. Yes. It's all right, this prophecy. That, that, that nations would, would bow, would crumble before him. Look what's happening. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has submitted to him. 
North Korea is submitting to him. Yes. It's amazing. Amen. Right? Yes. It's world changing. But here's what God also told Mark Taylor. God had told Mark Taylor that the Triple Crown winner in 1973, Secretariat, I may remember Secretariat, I remember sitting there watching it. Right? This big, massive horse that just took off from the minute the gate opened and took the lead and kept the lead all the way and won the Triple Crown. That that was a sign from God that the church was going to break out. Because back in 1973, remember they legalized abortion. Well, what happened in the church back in 1973? The Jesus movement. A movement, a revival movement among young people, teenagers, 20-somethings, swept the nation. In fact, it impacted my life. Back in 1973, I was 16 years old. Everybody's trying to do the math real quick. <laughs> Forget it. It's too old. You never figured it out. And me and my friend David Sheets were high on PCP. Nice. They called it angel's dust back then. That nah, was devil's dust. Yeah. It was a slightly hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic drug that you snorted. Yeah. And we hop on our 10-speed bikes in Florida. We're going to ride across the causeway to Clearwater Beach, not even realizing it's Easter Sunday morning. <laughs> We get down to Clearwater, on the way across the causeway, here's a group of about a hundred teenagers all marching across the causeway carrying signs that say, one way, there's only one way. Jesus. <laughs> and David looks over at me as we ride side, and he goes, that's some of those Jesus freaks. Mm -hmm. I said, oh yeah, I've heard about them. That's what they were called, the Jesus freak movement. <laughs> right? Yeah. We get down to the beach, they're baptizing people in the ocean. I'm sitting there watching this. These are kids my age. They got long hair like me. I used to have long hair back then. That was a rock star. You were. That's how I loved my baby. She wanted to marry a rock star. So, so uh, my friend was dating a girl who had a brother. Well, the brother was what was a Jesus freak. He was there in the group. He goes, oh, there's so-and-so. Let's go talk to him. I'm like, all right, I'm going to talk to these Jesus freaks. I'm 16 years old. I know everything. Everything. <laughs> so, uh, so what do you guys, what do you guys believe? You, you got, you know, I'm saying, so, so, so what do you believe? God created Adam? Oh yeah, He created him out of the dust of grass. Really? Don't you think it's more intelligent if God used evolution, starting with one thing and then slowly changing it, developing it, and then he goes, "No, that sounds pretty retarded." If you ask me, <laughs> uh, why would God do that? Uh, and uh, when he could just, his power and glory, just within a moment's time, form a human being out of the dust of the ground, just like the Bible says. Anyway, we debated. We finally left. As we're leaving, he's, the guy's walking us out, and there's a group of about six or eight of them. One of them's playing the guitar, and the others are just dancing. They're happy. They're happy. How about some joint trying to get happy? And they're on nothing but Jesus, and they're really happy. <laughs> Truly happy. Hallelujah. He goes, yes. so, do, you, do you see that? See how happy they are? See the joy? Oh, my God, I can have joy too. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just empty. Just empty. Lord. And me and my buddy David, it was a little uh, like where the shops and stuff are there in Colorado Beach. It was like a boardwalk, I guess you call it. We spent the next two hours walking up and down like this. What was that? What did we just witness? That was real. Those kids have something we don't have. That's not in this world. I knew it was real. I knew this Jesus freak thing was real. It was a major impact in my life that eventually caused me to bow my knee years later. But actually, shortly after that, my friend got in the newspaper and found a revival across the causeway into Tampa, and him and I went to a revival meeting, 
And I went forward and gave my life to Jesus Christ at 16. Amen. Yeah. Went to the mall, bought a cross. Started wearing it. Boldly. Put it on the outside. While I was there at the revival meeting, everybody who, uh, who gave their life to Christ, they took us off to a side area where they had counselors. And the counselor, you know, so tell me, tell me about your experience. I was shaking, man. I was shaking. Because you know, I wanted it to be real. I knew what I saw was real. What this thing to be supernatural? What to be real? I'm, I'm like this. I said, I just want to thank God in my life. I always want to be, you know, I don't know if I knew born again or whatever, you know. And uh, and he counseled me and goes down, you know, uh, I'm gonna. Do, do you have a Bible? I said, Well, I'm legally blind, so I, I, mean, I can't read. He goes, Well, you know, they have the Bible on tape. You know, go to a store and get the Bible on tape. I said, really? I said, okay. And uh, he goes, I'm going to write you. Okay? I don't live here in Tampa. I said, well, I live over in Clearwater. He goes, I'm from Miami. I attend the University of Miami. I said, oh, so you're not local? He goes, no, but I'll write you. I said, okay, all right. So we leave there. Got my cross. And I'm going around. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, 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 I'm working in an apartment complex as the landscape. Grab mowing the grass and stuff. All day long, I'm thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But three months went by. The one thing I didn't do was get in church. See, if you're a, when you become born again, you're a member of the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. And if you're a member, a part of that, a finger, a whatever, and you're detached from the body, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. The only way you can stay alive is you got to stay attached to the body. Mm -hmm. The body's the church. Yes. You have to stay attached to the church. you got to be in church. Yes, amen. Right. Amen. 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 And by that, about three months went by, and all my excitement had worn off. And I'm back to smoking pot, <laughs> doing all that stuff. One day, my mom says, Jim, you, you got a letter from Miami. I said, oh, really? She goes, yeah, here. I think it's that guy that counsels you at the crusade. I took it like this in my hands. And I said, you're too late. Oh, wow. You're too late. You waited three months to write me. Uh, I, I don't have the enthusiasm anymore. And it was years before I rededicated my life to Christ. Before I surrendered my life to Christ. Mm -hmm. See, when you get saved, you got to get in church. Amen. Immediately. Oh, amen. Immediately. Yeah. Amen. To get plugged in. Yes. <laughs> Back to the point of today. That was a little side of no, no extra fee for that. <laughs> It's all free. Hallelujah. It's all free. Amen? Amen. His grace is free. Yes. Aren't you glad? Yes. Yes. Aren't you glad you can't buy your way into heaven? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. All these Hollywood guys all going to jail now? You know what? Maybe that's the best thing that could happen to them. Yeah. Because maybe yeah. now they'll finally humble themselves and repent of their sin. Yeah. Harvey Weinstein. Yes. Yeah. What's the other guy? Bill Cosby. Oh, yeah. You guys repent. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. You'll have a mansion in glory. Amen? Amen. Anyway. The Jesus movement sprung out in 73. God told Mark Taylor, Secretariat, winning the Triple Crown was a sign of that. God told him to show to you, Mark Taylor, that this prophecy I just gave you about Donald Trump becoming president... To prove to you it's real and it's from me, there will be another Triple Crown winner. Now this is back in 2011. There hadn't been a Triple Crown winner for 33 years. Okay? So he's watching. The horse wins the Kentucky Derby. The same horse wins the Preakness. Wow, it's going to happen. God's confirming his word to me about Trump going to be president in the 2012 midterms and to go and to defeat Obama. Right? And Trump was at the time toying with the idea. Let me tell you something. Somebody said to him, 
President Trump last week when he's getting ready to go meet with Kim Jong Un. He says, uh, uh, Mr. President, are, are you prepared? He goes, let me tell you something. I've been preparing for this my entire life. Yes. <laughs> That's a fact. God has caused this man to, to learn and grow and know what he knows so he can do what he's now doing. Yeah. He's been pre prepared for this his entire life through all the things that he's done. Yeah. Triumphs and tragedies, victories, gains and losses. He's learned. He's, he, he's, he's learned how to be a uh, uh, undefeatable negotiator. Yeah. Yeah. He knows how to win Amen. when it comes to negotiating. Yeah. Right? Amen. People don't get it. They don't understand because he's not a politician. Right. They want some nice, deep politician that reads off the teleprompter. <laughs> right? I love it. He stood out there in the lawn of the White House two couple of days ago and took a question to reporters for 45 minutes. Yes. All like a bunch of barking. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, quiet, quiet. Anyway, back to my point. I love it. I can't help it. I love it. It's so exciting. I can't. I, so anyway, it's just too much fun. It's too. Is it not too much fun? Yeah. Watching the world lose their mind. Watching the liberals lose their mind. Yeah. Watching the media lose their mind. It's just too much fun. Yeah. It's not too much fun. Anyway. So, so Mark Taylor sitting there. Okay, let's get out. Here comes the Belmont Stakes. The horse doesn't win. There's no triple crown. Mark goes. Okay, wait a minute. I must have misheard God. Not only did the horse not win the Triple Crown, Trump did not announce that he was running for president. 2011. Oh, guess I missed God. I, 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 I knew it was. So Mark Taylor took the Trump prophecy, the prophecy about there being a Triple Crown winner, and put it on his bookshelf. All of a sudden. So Obama gets re-elected in 2012, although I guarantee he didn't really win, they stole it. But regardless, God allowed it to be, because we hadn't gotten fed up enough with liberal liberalism. The church was still asleep. Right? So he said, okay, church, you sleeping bunch of spineless wimps, I'm going to give you four more years of this nonsense. Maybe that'll stir you up. Right? So all of a sudden, here comes uh, you know, Obama's term ends in 2016, so it's going to be elected in 2016, but if you're going to run, you got to announce in 2015, right? Mm -hmm. Here comes the horse races in 2015, and a horse owned by a Muslim named American Pharaoh wins the Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, I'm not happy with that guy. God, why are you allowing a Muslim? to prosper and succeed when you know they hate your son Jesus and they hate your church. Yeah. American Pharaoh goes on to win the Preakness. Oh dear God, we can't have a Muslim win the Triple Crown? <laughs> American Pharaoh in 2015 goes on to win the Triple Crown. Two weeks later, Donald Trump announces he's running for President of the United States. And Mark Taylor goes, oh my goodness, it's true. It's real. He goes, wait a minute, what was the name of that horse four years ago that almost did but didn't? I'll have another. Mark goes, I thought I'd have another drink. All of a sudden, it realized God was saying to me, I'll have another one who will win the Triple Crown. Yeah. American Pharaoh. I was so mad at God. <laughs> God, this isn't right. You can't. No. A muscle? And the name American Pharaoh? What, what is that? The Pharaoh who persecuted the people of God, right? True. Well, you know, I guess you're right. Obama is like an American Pharaoh. Yeah. He is, yeah. Yeah. He's a Muslim and he hates Christ and he hates Christians. So, you know, pfft. I guess you're just telling us, hey, we got what we deserved. Right? Yeah. The church didn't rise up. We didn't vote them out. Anybody would have been better, right? Yeah. But we didn't. We didn't do it. Oh, well, I guess that's what. And then, and then I find the Mark Taylor prophecy. He goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. He pulls them out, and he realizes, it's okay, it wasn't. It could have happened back then, but it wasn't time. God had to push it up for four more years. All of a sudden, I see, now I see why the horse is called American Pharaoh and owned by a Muslim, because Obama's a Muslim, 
And he's like a Pharaoh who hates Christ and hates the people of God and hates Israel, right? I think he hated Israel more than he hated Christians, right? And God is going to raise up a deliverer. <laughs> and Donald Trump. Yeah. Donald Trump, like God raised up Moses to beat the Egyptian Pharaoh, God's going to raise up Donald Trump to deliver the people of God and to deliver Israel from the grip of the American Pharaoh and the deep state right by Barack Hussein Obama. Yeah. 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 All right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And Trump won in a landslide. Yeah. Right? Huge. Okay. Now, it's been three years, right? All of a sudden, now we have a horse come along called justify. Justify. Bible term. He wins the Kentucky Derby. But if you watch the Kentucky Derby, there was another horse running in second place most of the race. That other horse was called Promises Fulfilled. Uh, wow. <laughs> justify. And right next to him, promises fulfilled. God is saying, I fulfilled my promises. You prayed and I answered. You've got a godly president who talks more about God than all the supposed Christian bushes and all the rest of them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And when he says, God bless America, he means it. All the politicians say, God bless America. They're just saying it. When he says it, he means it. He goes, and God bless America. I love the way he does it. We are one nation under God. You know how he does it? Yeah. When he gives the speeches, Trump, anyway, yeah. promises <laughs> Justify goes on to win the Preakness. Okay, here comes the Belmont. Is Justify going to be the first? Because it had been 37 years since a Triple Crown winner with American Pharaoh won. 37 years. And here we are just three years later, 2018. Wow, we're going to have another triple crown winner that quick? Very unusual, right? I want you to watch the race. Dim the lights, Kevin. Let, let me, honey, can you get this, this yes. switch right over here? Get this light out. And I want you to notice the name of the horse in number two. And we are set for the 150th Belmont Stakes. And here with the call, Larry Colmas. Justify in stall one. Will he take his place in history? As Blended Citizen goes in, they're all in line. We are ready for a start. They're off in the 150th Belmont Stakes. And it was a very good beginning for Justify, who goes immediately to the early lead in the race to the first turn. So it will be justified to set the pace here. And there on the outside goes Restoring Hope, the other Bob Baffert trainee, who's wide into that turn and in running in second position. Right in behind them in third is Bravazo. Noble Indy is off the pace. And then on the inside comes Tenfold. The opening quarter mile was a swift one. 23.37 seconds. A very fast pace for Justify, who will lead the field on to the backstretch here with his stablemate, Restoring Hope, sitting in second. And on the inside, Bravazo is third. Noble India is fourth, tenfold fifth. Vino Rosso sixth. The blended citizen on the outside, followed by Hofberg and Free Drop Billy. Gronkowski is last. They've slowed things down a bit. 48.11 was the half. That's just a bit faster than American Pharaoh went three years ago. Justify and Mike Smith, the Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner, head up the backstretch in the Belmont Stakes with a length lead. Restoring Hope on the outside is second. Bravazo is down toward the inside. Noble Indy is next. Vino Rosso is close up running in fifth. He's five lengths off the lead. Three quarters went in one minute, 13.21 seconds. Halfway home in the Belmont. And then comes tenfold on the inside of Blended Citizen. Hofberg is drafting in behind horses. Six lengths off the lead. Free drop Billy and Gronkowski the last of them all. And Mike Smith and Justify make their run into the far turn. They've got a two length lead. Restoring hope is put to a ride as Vino Rosso begins to rev it up on the outside. Bravazo is down toward the rail. They've run a mile in 138.09 seconds. Justify is the leader, but it's just a half-length advantage here. Vino Rosso comes under a ride. Mike Smith is not asked Justify to go just yet. Justify a length lead here as they come to the top of the stretch. 
Vino Rosso is second. Hoffberg comes on the scene, and Gronkowski has cut the corner, and they're into the stretch. And Justify comes roaring home to a raucous Belmont Park with one furlong to run. Gronkowski and Hoffberg trying to run him down. Vito Rosso is fourth, a 16th to go. Justify is still there. Justify from Gronkowski. He's just perfect. And now he's just immortal. Justify is the 13th Triple Crown winner. Gronkowski was second. Hoffberg was third. And Vito Rosso was fourth. Justify has done it. Congratulations, Mike. Awesome. Let's begin. Mike, congratulations, brother. Restoring hope? Yes. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love That's it. The, right there, almost the whole race. Through Justify, through President Trump. Yeah. God is restoring hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now watch. I told you it's a Christian horse. It's a Christian jockey. Watch jockey Mike Smith, 52-year-old, oldest in history. Watch his reaction when the reporter finally catches up to him. Mike, you told us that you had probably been riding horses even before you could walk. So how long have you been dreaming about a moment like this? First and foremost. I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for blessing me on this wonderful day. We're all so blessed. We made it back safe. This horse ran a tremendous race. He's so gifted. He's sent from heaven. I tell you, it's just amazing. I, I, can't, I can't describe the emotions that's going through my body right now. What's God saying? What is God saying? Those promises, have they been fulfilled? God is restoring hope. Amen? Yes. Amen. The second Triple Crown winner just three years and had been 37 years prior to that? I told you Justify is a direct descendant of Secretariat, right? Yeah. Here's another very interesting fact. What number president is President Trump? 45. 45. What does Isaiah chapter 45 talk about? King Cyrus. Right? right. We've had prophets arise and say Trump is the modern day Cyrus sent by God to take down the Babylonian kingdom, the, the New World Order. That's what Cyrus did. He took down the Babylonian kingdom, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he set the Jews free and told them, go home and rebuild your temple. Yeah. Amen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And it said of Cyrus, I have called you by name, though you knew me not. Mm -hmm. yes. Some would say Trump you know, hasn't been a Christian probably all that long. Mm -hmm. Right? But he's called him by name, Donald Trump. Donald is Scottish. His mother was Scottish. By the way, his mother's ancestry traces right back to the great Scottish revival in the 1800s. Oh, wow. When he was doing at the convention, he brought his mother's Bible up onto the platform, if you remember, and said, this is very precious to me. This was my mother's Bible. His mother was a strong Christian. His dad was also a Christian, Trump's. Okay? They went to Presbyterian Church up there in New York. But anyway, um, so uh, Donald in Scottish means world ruler right. or world wielder. And Trump means to triumph. So Donald Trump literally means the world ruler's triumph. Amen. Well, who's the world ruler? Jesus Christ. Yes. Donald Trump, through him, Jesus Christ is triumphing, triumphing over the Antichrist, satanic, globalist, one world order agenda. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not stopped. Yeah. It's been stopped. Israel has now been elevated back to its rightful position of honor. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right? Right? Amen. 45th president. 
the, 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 the prophecies that people have said that Trump is a modern day Cyrus have been confirmed out of Isaiah 45 by Benjamin Netanyahu who when they dedicated our embassy in Jerusalem said he's a modern day Cyrus yeah, right. he says we, I compare President Trump to King Cyrus Benjamin Netanyahu Prime Minister of Israel said that yeah. <laughs> they minted a coin in commemoration of the opening of the embassy with Trump and King Cyrus' images side by side. What? This is amazing. Chapter 45 of Isaiah, 45th president, on the day in the year, Hebrew year, when he was sworn in to be president, and the Hebrew year 5777. And on the day, June, uh, January 20th, when he put his hand on the Bible and took the oath of office to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Uh, don't forget the domestic part of that. <clears throat> um, <laughs> Donald Trump in the Hebrew year 5777 was 70 years, 7 months, and 7 days old. Yes. Wow. That's a sign that he was born for this. Now here's the last sign. Justify. One, the triple crown, exactly 45 years to the day that Secretariat won it. Secretariat, who God told Mark Taylor was a sign that the church was going to break out, 45 years later to the day, Justify wins our president's the 45th president. He's Cyrus of Isaiah 45. Justify wins 45 years to the day. What's it all mean? God is going to justify the words and the work of President Donald Trump. Praise God. And all of his adversaries shall be silenced and put to shame. Amen. It also means that the whole reason Trump is there is for you and I, the church of the living God, to rise and take our rightful place in the culture as the pillar and foundation of the truth, put the Bible and the truth of the Bible, the history and the morality, back into the public schools, back into our politics, back into our media, back into every area of our culture as it was for the first 200 years of America's history. So I believe this is a sign Revival is coming. Just as there was a Jesus movement 45 years ago in 1973 while the devil legalized abortion, God was bringing revival through young people. Well now, I believe 45 years later, we're going to see another revival amongst our young people. God, we pray for right now in the name of Jesus that you will invade the elementary schools. You will invade the high schools. You will invade the colleges and the universities with men and women of God that will stand up and boldly declare that Genesis chapters 1 through 11 are living literal history, that God is the creator, and that evolution is a lie, and that the man, that the more history and morality of the Bible can put back in our uh, education system, back in our sciences, back in our politics, and back in our media, back in every area of public life here in America and around the world. So not only is God going to justify the words and work of Donald Trump, God's going to justify the Bible, his word and his church yes. and the Bible and his church you and me are once again going to be honored and respected and looked to for truth Amen. 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 that's what I believe justify winning the triple crown is as we on this Father's Day declare revival to come among the fathers and among the children to bring revival to the earth as President Trump leads the way in the political field globally and in our nation so it's time for the church to arise in the spirit realm and take back America Amen. for Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah! Yes. Hallelujah! And God has given us a sign to run with it baby! Break out of those gates and run! Yeah. Break out of those gates and run with the gospel. Yes. And take the lead and keep it all the way to victory. Amen. All the way to victory in Jesus' name. Let's rise. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow, what a beautiful word.
Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 You see, God is always and ever speaking if we have ears to hear and eyes to see. He's speaking through events that are taking place. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. For what you're doing in America and around the world. Yes. We thank you that your church is awakening. Now Lord, help us to step outside the four walls of the church. Yes. And take the message of your word into our schools, into our politics, into yes. our media, yes. into every area of America's culture. Yes. Yes. Declaring that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Yes. No man comes unto the Father but by him. Yes. That evolution is alive. And that biblical creation is true. Yes. Dinosaurs did not go extinct 65 million years ago, but were wiped out just 4,500 years ago in the flood of Noah's day. Oh, except for the ones that were on the ark. That were on the ark, because we have proof, because Job, which was written after the global flood of Noah's day, describes two dinosaurs in Job 40, the behemoth, and in Job 41, the Leviathan. Yes. Plus all the ark. It's found all over the world of humans with dinosaurs on a leash. Well, if dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, how did humans have pictures of them pulling dinosaurs along on leashes? The only way they could have done that is they see them. They have them. They use them. Come on, world, wake up. Time to get back to reality. <laughs> Right? Yeah. How do you get back to reality? Yeah. That's a fairy tale. Yeah. That's a fairy tale. Yeah. Dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. It's a fairy tale. It Happened 4,500 years ago in the global flood of Noah. How did all the layers get there in the Grand Canyon? The layers that are full of sea creatures in Arizona. <laughs> How did they get in the rock to begin with? Oh, it had to be soft mud. That's the only way it fossil forms. The only way it fossil forms is a living creature is suddenly and unexpectedly buried in mud. Oh! And then the mud hardens in the rock and it fossilizes. Amen. Global flood of Noah. If the earth was millions of years old, there would be slow, gradual layers. There are. There's distinct lines. Here's this kind of limestone. Here's that kind of stone. Here's that kind of sand. Distinct lines that were shuffled through the global flood of Noah's day and sorted according to their weight and density and size. That's truth. The earth being millions of years old is a fairy tale. Come on, America. Come back to reality. We honor the Word of God. The Word of God. Jesus said of the Word of God, Thy Word, Father, Thy Word is truth. Sanctify them by Thy truth. Thank You, Lord, for Your Word today. Hallelujah. Send us forth like justified. Yes. Yes. Let's come running out of the gates yes. with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Boldly. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's go forth, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Patriot Preacher, Jim Alderdice, pastor of New Life Worship Center Church of God in Peoria, Arizona. Thank you for watching this video. Please share it. Click the little notification bell so you get updates when we post new ones. And if you're in the Phoenix metro area, we invite you to join us Sundays and Wednesdays for the revival. Check our website, patriotpreacher.org, for service times and the address. And we invite you also to help us take back America for Jesus Christ by joining us in financial partnership to help us produce our Bible mercials. This is the vision God has given me, to create TV, radio, and social media ads that preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, confronting our culture that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life, that America needs to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to get saved. We're also going to focus these commercials on banning the lie of evolution from our public schools. 
Our kids are being lied to. And we're going to confront that and, and get evolution banned from our public schools. That diabolical, unscientific, false religion, fairy tale lie. We're also going to see that abortions get banned. We're going to stop the murder of our children in America. It must stop immediately. We're also going to overturn homosexual marriage. Amen? And we're going to see that the Democratic Party is destroyed by proving that anyone who votes for any Democrat is voting for the devil. And you will be held accountable to God on the day of judgment and be sent to hell and burned alive forever. Because the Democratic Party is in alignment with the will of the devil and contrary to the Bible and the will of God. So all Americans must repent. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And this will bring revival and restoration to our nation. So please consider just a small gift of even 5 or $10 a month to help us produce and broadcast our Bible marshals on TV, radio, and in the social media to confront the culture with the truth of God's Word and Jesus Christ. Thank you, and God will bless you richly.